Good afternoon, Pastor. Well, hi. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, everybody, to our random moment with Pastor David Unfiltered. Uh, Pastor, something today I'd like uh, to get your feedback on, and it's Christianity and culture. There seems to be this paradox between the two, the two, uh, Christianity and culture. But then I'm seeing that, I, and I want to read this quote as a, qu a question, is Christ and culture. Does the church evangelize the world or does the world evangelize the church? Well, first I'll, I, I want to make mention of the, how you said a paradox. You know, I, I, I was in church one day and my, my, the pastor was preaching and he said, you know, this, this is a, a paradox. And so my, my sister Madeline turned to me and she said to me, actually she wrote, what is a paradox, right? <laughs> and so I wrote, two doctors and handed it back to her, you know. So when I hear a the paradox. Word paradox, you know, yeah, it's a paradox, two doctors. And so whatever. Uh, getting back to the question, right? Um, I, I don't think that it's possible that the church not be influenced by the culture that it is uh, serving. It just is not possible because we live within the confines of a culture and and the culture that we live in here in the United States is a culture that's been established over 200 plus years, you know, that at one time had been founded on the principles of the Judeo-Christian faith. You know, our, our, our documents of the earliest time are, are just permeated with, with scripture and inferences related to our faith and our laws, our legal system is uh, built on uh, the Judeo-Christian commands and also, uh, on the one hand, culture is, is this stabilizing force that has united uh, these United States and has given to us um, a, um, a backdrop by which we live our lives and those things that we assume to be good or those that we assume to be evil. And so, you know, uh, Christianity cannot help but be influenced by the culture that is intended to uh, uh, affect. And so that's why the Jesus movement was such a uh, cultural kind of, uh, of affair, if you will, because we took what was modern in the culture and the needs of the culture, and we addressed them with scriptural answers and we formed a, a way of doing church, if you will, that that appealed certain elements within the culture. Because during that day, the uh, the young people were abandoning church because they didn't find um, the church to be relevant to their lives. And so God, through uh, Pastor Chuck and others, began a a movement that eventually was called the Jesus Movement. And so. In the early days of my walk with the Lord, we would we would be aware of the culture that we lived in. And so the music that was produced, for example, through groups like Love Song and others, which really had a heavy kind of a beach boy feel to them. Well, that was our culture, you know, and the Bible studies where Pastor Chuck would sit on a stool and casually share. That was very much part of our culture. And I don't I know Chuck didn't realize that. I, I know that he didn't plan that. But by the fact that he would sit with his Bible on his knee and would mem speak from memory things really appealed to, to the younger people. That was part of our culture. Lonnie Frisbee, who was a young man who at one time would teach uh, what I used to call the youth, the youth group, which it really wasn't. It was a church service that he led. Well, he was a hippie and he looked like, he, you know, the, the long hair and the beard and all that appealed to our culture. So there are certain things within the culture that that we, the church, have always um, always used in order to to promote the gospel of Jesus Christ. I mean, even in the time of Martin Luther, he took the uh, a bar song, you know, the bar melody, and and put words to it. A mighty fortress is our God, which was a well-known bar song at that day. So we redeem the culture. And so we can take the elements of that, which we would call 21st century, and we redeem it. Now, here's the problem. It's when the church begins to accommodate mm -hmm. the message to the culture. It's when we begin to compromise 
and begin to make biblical excuses, you know, for, for, for lifestyles or particular sins that are strictly forbidden. You know, when you go to a church and, and the leader of the church, the pastor, you know, has a uh, worship team that after church he goes out with and shares some beers at a local, at a local bar, which, which happens and which I've heard of, that's, that's a compromise with the culture. That's not redeeming the culture. That's certainly not presenting Christ to a lost culture. That's simply compromising mm -hmm. to the culture. Or when you begin to preach uh, messages that are intended to uh, appeal to the carnality of the listener. For example, uh, I was reading a quote the other day that the person said that um, the uh, three things that Satan promised Jesus and that Jesus rejected are the three things that many prosperity uh, preachers are promising to their congregations. Mm -hmm. You know, power and prestige, you know, those kinds of things, the lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, pride of life. Those are the things Christ rejected, and yet those very often are the things you'll see on, on TV mm -hmm. programs, you know. If you follow Christ, you're never going to be sick. If you follow Christ, you're going to be popular. If you follow Christ, it's all going to be great for you. So there's no place for affliction. There's no place for, for suffering in today's theology. So I think that that is an appeal to the flesh, and that's an appeal to the common culture, a culture that rejects the, the idea of uh, anything being difficult or anything causing pain. So the church is intended to be salt and light. We're, we're intended to affect the decay and the darkness of the world. That's what we're called to do. And so uh, we can work within the confines of our culture to present a message that's an answer to the sinfulness of those who make up our culture. And so uh, I, I realize that today I'm dressed in a way that my dad at my age would not dress, you know? My dad liked different music than I, my dad, everything different because of his culture. So I am aware of that. I mean, I'm a pastor wearing sweatshirts and tennis shoes, right? And so not all pastors do that. I remember driving years ago with Marie when our church was brand new, driving through a neighborhood. And uh, I turned to my wife and as we were driving through the neighborhood, I said to my, my Marie, I said, hey, that guy mowing the lawn there is a pastor. And she didn't look yet. And she says, how do you know? I said, look at him. So she looks and there was a man in a suit with a tie, a white shirt, <laughs> mowing his lawn. I said, I guarantee that guy is a pastor because he's wearing his work uniform right now. So in case somebody should need him, he's in his suit, right? That's giving in to your culture, the cultural ex expectation of that pastor. And so he dressed in the uniform that made him appear to be a pastor. And so in answer to the question, finally, I think that uh, the church is intended to be salt and light. The church is intended to reveal the evil by, by preaching what is true and living what is true. And the church is intended to transform the elements of the culture that are not pleasing to God, whatever they may be. And, uh, and instead to produce a a culture that honors God, loves God, knows his word, etc. In other words, the church is supposed to have an influence on the darkness. Mm. And that's what God has called us to do. Amen. Thank you so much, Pastor, because, you know, today we're living in a, in a culture, in a time where mm -hmm. this cancel culture, this compromise, and, and hearing clarity from a pastor who's been doing this for quite a long time, yeah. and that we don't transform the culture we uh, well, we don't tra we don't transform the culture. We're transformed by the renewing of our mind in Christ. Yeah, Jesus. the culture doesn't is not intended to transform us. Yeah, you know, be not conformed to the world, neither the things of the world, in order to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. Yes. In Romans twelve one and two. That's well, right, Pastor. Thank you so much. All right, and we have Wednesday evening service coming up tomorrow. That's right, and we look forward to you guys come joining us uh, seven o'clock. In the chapel, yep. we look forward to seeing you guys. Amen. And go with us to Israel. Go with us to Israel, yes. <laughs> and we'll, we'll uh, experience the culture of 
Of Israel. Of Israel. All right. With some tacos. And some burritos. <laughs> God bless you, Pastor. Thank you, guys. Thank you for watching.